Father, we are not enough. We are not enough to break the chains of hell off our life. We need you in this place today. If your hands are lifted, if your hands are not lifted, I just want you just out of your mouth. It can be loud. It can be quiet. But I just need you to say, I need you today, God. I need you today. I need you in this place today. My family needs you in this place today. My kids need you in this place today. Lord, we need you in this place. You know the giants I'm facing. You know the difficulties I'm walking through. We need you in this place today. If you believe it, come on, put your hands together and give God a great hand clap of praise today. We love you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Man, we're so glad to have you in the house of the Lord today. We had a great uh, first service, 945. If you didn't know we had a 945 service, you do now. So if you have a busy day and you have things going on, you're like, man, I got to do this. You, We have a 945. We, we would love to have you. Amen. Um, listen, if this is your first time here, we welcome you. If this is your hundredth time, we welcome you. If you've been here since the beginning, we welcome you. Uh, service will be just a little bit different today. Today is Connect Group Launch Sunday. I can't be the only one that's excited about that. I said I really can't be the only one that's really excited about that. But what you've seen as you were walking in today, you've seen some tents out there, and we got some just amazing things that are happening. Um, and we're going to give you ample time today to go out there and just see what things are about. I'm going to preach a little bit. Service is going to be just a tad different in that regards. Um, it's going to kind of be like just back in Jesus' day. They had two fishes and five loaves, and they multiplied it. They, they broke bread. They had a little sermon, and they broke bread. They had fellowship, and that's what today is going to be about. So we're going to, we had some fellowship. Um, we're going to have more fellowship. We're going to just share the word. We're going to break. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth. Come on, are you with me here? So we're going to break some bread here, and then we're going to break some bread out there. As you walked in, you'd be like, what is going on here? So there are tents. And these are just connect groups, just things that we have uh, going on. Some are Bible studies. Some are just kind of a little bit like hanging out type deals. Um, some, uh, we have a outreach, serve the city. That's ministry. Jesus said, go into the highways and byways. But each one of them has uh, some food, has some gifts, have some things going on. And so I'm going to encourage you after service. I am going to do my part. And I'm going to get you, get you, I'm not going to officially end service, but we're having a service here and then we're having a service out there. And I want you to take time and just go and talk to people and introduce yourself to people and find out uh, about people. One of the biggest things that can happen, you know, as the church is growing, like, well, I, I don't really know, you know, they come first service. I, this is a great opportunity. I'll, I'll tell my age a little bit, but when I was growing up, there was a, a show called Cheers, and their theme song was Everybody Knows Your Name. And maybe, you, yeah, tell my age a little bit. Some are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But where everybody knows your name. Now, if the world can gravitate that, because that was a bar, if the world can gravitate that, how much more shall the church grab a hold of that? And that's a great opportunity. This is where you get meaningful relationships, that you get, you get to meet people, you get to talk to people, and then you'll be amazed. You'll see somebody like, man, they just seem like they have it all together. And then you get in a group and you find out, oh, my, they're just as jacked up as I am. And so we just want to lay that out there real quick. If you are perfect and you have it all together, and you're like the Beaver Cleaver family, like maybe you don't need a life group. Maybe you don't need a connect group. But if you jacked up, and I just want to make sure we get it all out there. Who's jacked up? Just raise your hand. Okay, see, you fit in. You fit right in. Like they're like, they just know that when you go in the, you're going to be, you're going to be around jacked up people. Um, so I know my wife's got iced coffee at theirs. They do a Bible study. Been doing it from the beginning. Uh, we got a men's Bible study. I, I don't, not sure what they got going on, but they got some stuff going on at their tent. 
I know there's cookies. I know there's stuff to drink. Um, hey, can I have that at one of the tents? It's, uh, it's called the Social Connect. Thank you. Uh, it's called the Social Connect tent. And what it is, it's an opportunity. I know how the enemy works. And you get filled up on Sunday, but man, you got to live life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And sometimes the enemy comes right after you as soon as you leave service. Hello? If you're waiting on me to preach, I'm preaching. And um, the enemy comes in, and so we have a team that just works so hard to make sure that the word is available to you throughout the week. And it's the social connect, whether you can get on YouTube and you can see the service, um, replay the service, you can go back. There's so much that's out there, and maybe you don't take notes. Stephanie and I grew up in the, in the church where you took notes back in the day. And I think technology's advanced a little bit. This is a great opportunity to go back. You're like, oh, I can't remember that scripture. You can go in there. You can go to YouTube. Um, not only that, in our app, you go to our app, we have all the notes from the service there on the app. I mean, great notes. I mean, incredible. I go back and read them myself. The notes are actually better than my sermon sometimes. I mean, it's just like, man, these notes are so good. Like, I really said that? It was the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we have that, and just a, a way, just a, a variety of ways. So I want you to get out there. You need to subscribe. You need to like. You need to comment. You need to share. You need to get the word out there. Getting filled. And if you do that, if you go to the social connect, you are going to get a one of a kind, never been produced or anything. It is just for impact. It is the impact church scented candle you will get. You get one. So I don't want no fights out there. It's one per household, so don't send four of your kids to try to get four candles. You don't need four candles in your house. One good candle will last a long time. One per household, but there's actually a couple of them. Uh, one is, and if you try to order it, you can't order it. It's just impact only. Falling in love with Jesus candle, and then we got Holy Ghost fire for the other candle and so we're just want to encourage you go to you'll get that but the it's just a great time and, and i'm going to preach a little bit about that well you know what i'm going to leave it up here that looks pretty amen and so i'm going to give you some time we're getting there i'm going to give you some time we're going to go and just it doesn't mean take off and you're like i gotta catch the game this is more important and I'm going to give you time that you can spend some time here and you can go and do the things that you have to do today. Amen? So there's a passage that I want to take a few moments and preach from today that just kind of epitomizes what Impact Church is about, what we're about, what we feel like God is taking us. We have uh, the 12 stones, and I preach about that kind of in the beginning of each year that just describes, you can go on our app uh, or website or you can go to these things and you can find out what our 12 stones are and, and you can find out information but this is kind of everything we do kind of I don't want to say forms around this passage but it just does I'm going to explain why it does and it's talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda it's in John chapter 5 and just a little context of it before I give you three scriptures today and then we're going to go and have a good time outside um Here's a man that is waiting, and they believe that an angel would come down and stir the waters, and then anyone who would step in to those waters or get into those waters would be healed. And so here is a, a man who has been waiting by this pool. Jesus approaches him and says something, just starts off the conversation just so profound. But it's in John chapter 5, verse 6. And it says this, when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there. He's crippled. And there, he had been there a long time in that case. And he saith unto him, this is King James Version from a King James Version people. And he saith unto him, will thou be made whole? He says, do you want to be made whole? What I love about this, and I say it all the time, is that if you're not diving into the Word of God, you are missing out so much. Because there's so many things in it, so many, and it's not by coincidence. There, there are things that are in there that are just mind-blowing. 
Because if you start, to, if you begin to look at all the miracles that Jesus did, whether you know blinded eyes, or he'd spit in dirt, or he'd come over, hey, do you want to see? Or, or 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 somebody who's been hunched over, who's been crippled, and do you want to do you want to be healed? He doesn't tell this man. It says he's been there a long time. He's been in this position a long time, and he comes to him and, and he says, "Do you want to be made whole? Not do you want to be do you want to be healed? He doesn't say, "Do you want to be able to walk around? Do you want to be this?" He says, "No. Do you want to be made whole?" It kind of goes back to to me, the children of Israel, that all through. The New Testament, the Pentateuch, it comes through and, and we see that the children of Israel come up out of Egypt. But Egypt never come up out of them. I threw it out there. Hopefully you caught that pass. They come up out of Egypt, but Egypt never come up out of them. And Jesus is saying here, what, what benefit, what benefit is it for you to be healed if you're going to go back into the same situation? What benefit is it going to be if I'm going to bring you out of that relationship but you still have stinking thinking and you'll just find another one like the woman at the well? The woman at the well has been married five times and the one she's with. She came out of these relationships. We don't know why or how or what's going on with these relationships, but she's had five of them and she's with somebody now and she's come out of there. But, but it's never, she was never made whole. You can come out of some stuff, but he says, I want to make you whole spirit, mind, and body. Sure got quiet. He says, do you want to be made whole? And, and, and a lot of things that we do at Impact Church, and we say it all the time, that, that you're not a number. You're not just, we, we don't count you on Sunday to, so we can say we have certain numbers, or we don't say, oh, we can do this, or, or we had so many tents outside. You're not a number. You are a purpose. You are destiny. You are a plan that God has for you. And he wants you to be made whole. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal that trauma. He wants to heal those thoughts you're struggling with. He wants to heal that emotional pain that you went through in that relationship. You're out of the relationship, but you're still battling the scars of the relationship. That was my little Hulk Hogan. Come on now, somebody. You can catch that later. But look what happens here in John chapter 5, verse 7. He says, you want to be made whole. And look at his response. He says, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets ahead of him. He says, I have nobody to help me. I have no relationships in my life. He's saying it here. I am doing life alone. I, I have nobody. I have no connections. I, I don't have any solid relationships in my life to help me get my breakthrough. I don't have any meaningful relationships in my life. I told this story at the first service. I tell it again. So I had to get my car worked on, and so I had to drop it off, and then... They called me and said, hey, the car's, car's ready. Well, Stephanie's at work, so I had nobody. Everybody was kind of at work, so I had no way. I wasn't sure. You know, Stephanie's like, well, how are you going to get there? I was like, I'll figure it out. And so she, you know, time passes, and she calls, I think, around lunchtime or whatever. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm getting ready. I got my car. She's like, how would you get your car? And I was like, well, I said, Na neighbor guy looked like he was going to uh, go out for breakfast. So I asked him if I could jump in the car and get a ride. And they're like, I said, where are you going? They're like, oh, we're going here. And where are you going? I was like, well, I'm going on the other side of town, but just drop me down downtown. I'll be all right. They're like, how are you going to get there? I'm like, yeah, I'll figure it out. 
Now I got to drop downtown and I see somebody going by. I'm like, hey, can you give me a ride up on the hill? They're like, yeah, jump in the car. So I jumped in the car and went. So he's like, I could never do that. I'm like, do what? She was like, just like that. Meaningful relationships in your life. People that will help you get to where you need to be. Hello? People that will help you get to where you need to be. That's what relationships are about here at Impact Church. Helping you get to where God's called you to be. But not only just these healthy, meaningful relationships, because you think about this, this man cried out, I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. I'm like, you don't have nobody in your life? Like, there's no one you can text? They're like, they didn't, did they text back then? Like, there's no one. That, it's, it's a far cry from the man, the other crippled man, that needed help and the house was full and he had relationships in his life that said, hold up, we'll rip the roof off. We'll drop you down in that thing. You're going to get your heal. This guy says, I, I have no one. The other guy says, I got some people that are willing to rip a roof off up in this place. But here's, this is, this is my mo. He says, I have no one. But yet, this relationship with the man with the roof the Bible says, not when they seen his faith. The Bible says when, it, when Jesus seen their faith. I can't just hang out with anybody. I got to get connected with people that are like when Elizabeth and Mary got around each other. The baby began to leap down in her womb. I got to get around people that will cause purpose in me to begin to leap. I got to get around people that will cause the destiny that's down in me to begin to leap. I got to get around people that will cause victory down inside of me to begin to leap. I got to get around people that says, you can make it. You will make it. You will get through this. I got to get around people that will tell me I'm the head and not the tail. I need people to tell me that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I need people to tell me that when I'm speaking fear and I'm speaking discouragement. I need somebody to tell me, no, 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 don't speak that. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. I need to know that when I'm speaking that that giant looks so big, I need somebody to tell me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't need to be around still people. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you a steel person? Still, still complaining, still murmuring, still backbiting, still going nowhere, still, oh, I don't know. Nobody knows. No, we have to get around people that says when they seen their faith. Like, yes. I have a friend, he didn't graduate the same year as me from Oral Roberts University. I think he was a couple years behind me, but an incredible mind. He was in some of my hermeneutics class and preaching classes and Old Testament classes. But you'd be walking through campus, and as you're walking through campus, you would stop him and be like, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And without a Bible, without any notes, he would quote verbatim and then he would ask you you want new king james or new living and he would quote the whole chapter there were whole passages i think he quoted the whole book of james i'm in an incredible mind and so I follow him on Facebook, and he shared something this week that was kind of just like mind-blowing a little bit. And there was a bunch of stuff, and he was talking about relationships. But he kind of said this quote at the end of the Facebook post, and it was this way. 
it was a long post, but it, it kind of all cultivated into this one quote here. He said, I thought life was shaped by information, but it's actually shaped by relationships. And he was talking about, I, I, I love that, uh, that he studied, and I love that he got into word, but it becomes so much, it was almost like he can impress people with it that he failed to work on the relationships in his life. And now that he's older and he looks back over it, he's like, man, I, I thought all this was shaped by all this information that I got, but actually it was, I, I, I walked away from the relationships in my life. And so we see this man at the pool of Bethesda He's caught up in this vicious cycle in life. He's going back and forth and back and forth. And every day, it just seems like every time I go there, I don't have anybody in my life. I don't have anybody that's encouraging me. I don't have anybody that's strengthening me. I don't have anybody to put in there. And the next day, come back. And the next day, because the Bible says at certain times, the, 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 the angel would come. And, and so he's in this vicious cycle in his life. And it so reminds me of a story when we first moved here. When we first moved here, I went to a, a gas station when we first moved here. I'll never forget this story. It stuck with me forever. And I pulled up to get gas, and, and I was paying cash, so I had to go inside. And, and I come around, and I walk in. And this couple, this couple, and they are screaming at each other. They are like in pointing in their face. You're no good. And he's giving it and she's going back. And I'm like, they're going to, I met. it's like Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. I'm like, somebody's going to bite somebody's ear. <laughs> Screaming, dropping language. Go, I'm like, oh, oh my. And so I go inside. I'm like, hey, can, can you call the police? She's like, why? What, what happened? I'm like, these two outside, the, the, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And she pokes around the thing. She's like, oh, they'll be all right. I'm like, what do you mean? They're screaming at each other. She's like, no, they do this all the time. She's like, just give it a moment. She said, they'll be loving on each other. I'm like, there is no way. Like, this cannot be good. So I go get something to drink and stuff, and I come back, and I open the door, come back outside, and there they are, my poo-poo bag, the baby, you know I like. I'm like, it's like this, this guy, he's in this cycle, and that's how the enemy works. He wants us to be caught up in this vicious cycle in our life. He constantly wants us he, over here. Let me, Webster defines it this way. A cycle is defined as a course or a series of events or operations that recur regularly and usually lead back to the starting point. I loved it that they sang that song because a portion of that song, the third song that we sang for worship, it says, I can't go back to the beginning because the Bible always talks about going forward. Pressing forward. The Apostle Paul says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm pressing forward. The enemy wants us to stay in a cycle. And this man has no relationships, no nothing in his life. And now he's been caught in this cycle because he has no godly relationships in his life. So often we can be caught up in, in generational cycles. This is why Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made whole? Not do you want to be healed. Not do you want to get better. Do you want to be made whole? Why? Because I, to me, to me, he was caught up more than just going back and forth every week, every day. He was caught in an emotional cycle. How many people here today, you don't have to show your hands like we did earlier. But how many people here today are caught up in an emotional cycle? Up, down, up, down. Some of us are more emotional than the jackrabbit at Kennywood. 
I understand we have bad days. I understand that you have moments. I understand we have carnal nature, this fleshly nature. I understand, but man, you're just, whoa, uh, boo. You don't know if you should text you, if you could call you, if you should be around you. Am I all right to talk to you today? Is today a bad day? You're up and down. It's an emotional cycle, and he did not call us for that. He says, I want you to be made whole. I want you to be made whole spirit, mind, and body. I want to heal that thing so that you don't bleed on the next relationship that you have. You're out of the situation, but you're still, that wound's still there. And all of a sudden now, you'll begin to bleed the first time somebody said something to you. I'm preaching better than someone shouting in here. We can get caught up in emotional cycles. We can get caught up in a cycle of offense. Offended at everything. Is that banana brown, right? No, it's not a brown banana. How dare you? It's a cycle of offense. It's every little drop of a hat. We could get a. F- Dad, she wanted it back. <laughs> it's every little drop of a hat, things can begin to happen. We can get caught up in a cycle of offense. We can get caught up in a cycle of unforgiveness. Oh, Pastor, that was so good on unforgiveness. That was so good. I'm letting that person go. I'm letting that. No, I got to go back. No, no, he don't understand what they said. He don't know. I read that Facebook post, and I know. They were talking about the beach and their vacation, but subliminally, they were really talking about me. I know it. The sand meant the time we were together, and the towel represented who we, oh, they tried to outsmart me, but they're not going to outsmart me. In a cycle of offense, always finding yourself back. Impact Church who wants to help you get out of that cycle in your life. We could get caught up in, a, in this cycle, a cycle of unforgiveness, a cycle of anger, a cycle of shame, a cycle of regret, a cycle of just a hot mess. Constantly. Oh, I got to no. Uh, no. And Jesus is saying that, John chapter 5, verse 6, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be set free from the cycle that you've been caught up in? That thing that you keep going back to, the Bible declares it this way, a dog will return to its vomit. A dog will return to his vomit. Means the enemy will come after you and try to get you to go back. And Jesus gives a menu. Jesus just, just, just lays it out there in John chapter 5, verse 8. And this is, this is kind of the essence of who we are at Impact Church. He said, then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Somebody shout, get up. No, that was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, get up. Still caught in a cycle. Get up. He says, get up. Get up. This is, this is, this is why if you're new to this church or you've just been coming or, or you're thinking about inviting a friend and you're just a little like, man, I, I, I want to invite this friend, but I'm kind of nervous because, you know, the, the praise and worship can get a little rowdy and they could get a little, and people start lifting their hands and, and they might get a little shy and they're not sure. This is why praise and worship is so important to us because it is helping you get up out of your situation. This is why we start the service off with praise and worship. It is letting you know that you have been stuck in fear. You've been stuck in shame. You've been stuck in regret. You've been stuck in disappointment through the week. And they come in and they begin to sing and they begin to worship. And that's why they keep repeating themselves. Because some people say that, you know, they just always, why do John keep repeating that song over and over? Okay, over and over. Because sometimes when you're in the mud...
You got to tell them you can. You can get out. You can get out. You can get out. You can get out. You can get up. You can get up. I, I know you've been knocked down, but you can get up. This is, this is why for us that it's so in, praise and worship is so intentional for us. It's helping you to get up out of the muck. It's helping you to get up out of the mess. It's helping you get up out of the disappointment. It's helping you get up out of the shame. It's helping you get, you know what? I thought we were waiting. David, you better get your giddy up real. Oh, David. Where'd you come from? But this is why for us, this is why. We're doing a day like today, the connect groups, and we're going to go just a little further. I got a few minutes. This is, this is, this is if somebody's asking and say, well, tell me about your church. Just tell them, go read John chapter 5, verse 8. This is us. This is us. When you come in, you will not stay in your disappointment. You will, we're letting you know, as soon as you walk through those doors and that, that countdown hits double zero, you're going to know you're not staying in that fear. You're not staying in that disappointment. You're not staying in that mess. You're not staying in that victim mentality. You're not staying in that woe is me. You're not going to come in. No, we're letting you know you got to get up. You got to get up. You have got to get up. The Bible says a righteous man may fall down seven times, but he gets back up again. Ecclesiastes say two are better than one because when one falls, the other is there. To, oh, you don't. I wish I had a few men. Well, help them get back up. Somebody shout, get up. Oh, I know I only got four minutes, but I need you to jump to your feet, find three people around you and tell them, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Tell them, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, tell them, come on, find them. Find four of your people. Tell them, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, 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 get Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. I can't hear you. I can only hear John. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Come on. He said, so this is why we're so intentional about our praise and worship. This is, this is why, this is why we get up and we encourage it. This is why we get up and say, come on, lift your hands. This is why we say, come on, you need to move. Because when you're stuck in the mud, when you're stuck, you can't move. We're like, come on, you can't. You can get through this. You can get out of this. Watch. Watch. You going to keep playing? All right. He says here, he says, get up. Take up your mat. Somebody shout, take up your mat. Pick up your mat. Why did he tell him to pick up his mat? Because if he would have left the mat there, there would have been an expectation that he would eventually go back to that place. I can't go back to that. This is why we do two services. This is why we're very intentional about the Word of God. This is why we're very serious about the Word of God. This is why people just work and, and get the scriptures and trying to make sure you get it. Why? Because my prayer, my prayer is helping you realize you don't live there anymore. It's helping you getting the Word and being relatable and showing different illustrated sermons to let you know you don't have to live there anymore. It's just like I preached last week and I gave this. It's realizing I don't live there anymore. I don't have to live in shame. I don't have to live in regret. I don't have to live in unforgiveness. I don't have to live in my past. I don't have to live in that hurt. I don't have to live there anymore. He's got a plan for me. He's got a purpose for me. He's got, high five your neighbor tell him pick up your mat. Pick up your mat. Pick up. Pick, pick, pick it up. 
This is why we, this is why we're praying before service. This is why we're encouraged. Say, God, let your word resonate with your people. Let the word come alive. Let the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It is his word. We want that word to get in you. That's why we are doing the social connect. That's why we have the, uh, the notes on our app. We want that word to get in you that you don't live there anymore. And then he says, walk. Somebody shout walk. This is connect groups. Why are we doing this? Why do we have tents? Why do we have this? This right here. This right here. This is why we do connect groups. They're different. Some are Bible study. Some are hanging out. Some are just fellowshipping. They're, they're all different. But it's walking. You have getting up, right? I'm up. I'm up. I'm taking my mat. And I'm walking. Now, you have to understand, he's not wor- walked for over 30-something years. Connect groups are designed in helping you learn to walk out your faith we come in we get praise and worship right are you with me we get praise and worship and then the word we get up here and get to preaching and it's like you know what I got my mat but I got my mat but I'm still I still got some stuff I want to be made whole I want to be made whole but I still have I still have some things connect groups are helping you yeah walk out your faith walk in a Walk in forgiveness, walk in grace, walk in mercy, walk in the strength of God, walk in the love of God. Well, you were here and you couldn't go, but now that you got connected with some people and now that you got everything's coming together, you'll be able to walk in forgiveness, walk in mercy, walk in love, walk in wholeness. Learning to let it go. Learning to let it go. Learning to let it go. So I told you, if we have the ushers come forward, I told you I was going to give you plenty of time. I don't want you taking off and say, oh, I can make the game. Listen, this is so much more important. This is not cutting a short service. I'm not even going to give a prayer or even a benediction. Because we're not ending it. We're just moving it. To help you, you can go out there, you find out what's going on. We got middle school, we got uh, youth, we got Bible study, we got uh, biscuits and bull- Bibles, biscuits and bullets. We got outreach ministry, we got, I mean, we, 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 we got a load of, of things. As the ushers, did you get tired? Oh, he did. <laughs> you were wore out. But I'm going to give you ample time. But before we go, the ushers, you can go ahead. Ushers are going to go, and they're going to come around for their tithes and offering and for your prayer requests. Now, you would have your prayer requests and whatever you need to pray, and we're going to believe, and we're going to do announcements here in a moment, and then we're just moving the service. We're going to just move it. There's stuff to eat. There's stuff to drink. We've got a big thing of water. I know it's beautiful and nice out there, and it gives you an opportunity to do that. Oh, do we have announcements? <laughs> I'm working you hard today. I should have brought them up. All right. Hey, listen. Can you give me a little music? All right. Catalyst Youth, Middle School, and Young Adults, you both meet tonight. See the app for times and location. Impact Couples are going to meet Friday, September 20th. There's a booth out there for that. Next Step High School, Young Adults, September 22nd. Got to register for that. I say all this to say that everything is on the app. Everything is on the website. Ball Connect groups are all listed up under our upcoming events. Listen, please do not take off. Move it right on outside. Listen, you say, well, I'm already signed up. I'm leaving. No, I will chase you down. You want to see a good YouTube video? Pastor running after you down 4th Street. He won't catch Male Athlete of the Year, yo. 
And you don't believe me, I have my dear friend Tyrone Roseberry show up this morning. Hadn't seen him in over 30 years. He'll testify he was at the first service. He's the one that created the nickname for me, White Lightning. Come on, somebody, listen. I will chase you down, right? If you signed up already, that's fine. Then go talk with somebody. Go meet somebody you've never met before. Go talk with somebody. Maybe accountability. Maybe say, hey, man, hey, how are you doing? Maybe some of you know. Hang out with them. Talk with them a little bit. Normally at this time we would pray and do all that. No benediction today. I'll meet you outside. God bless.